in recruitment and selection, you've probably guessed that this is one of my favorite topics, navigating the interview and talking about interview questions and the right answer. I love this diagram because I think it represents the interview very well. This is actually called an Italian garden. I know a little bit about gardening. I've been studying it over the last few years. And Italian gardens actually have no flowers. They're all greenery. And they often have these complicated maze structures, which are absolutely amazing to look at. How does this relate to the interview? Well, just like an interview, there's lots of different ways you can go when answering the question, but there really is just one right answer. That's the STAR method we're gonna talk about today. And navigating the interview is getting you through that maze with the one right answer that's gonna unlock the job of your dreams. We're gonna talk about some pre-interview prep that you need to do, the types of interview questions you're gonna encounter, something called the STAR method, which is a proven method for responding to interview questions, and then we'll touch upon what's coming up in terms of the mock interviews. So first of all, the interview. Hopefully your resume, your cover letter, and your portfolio got you the ticket in the door that you need. Now the key that's gonna unlock the job that you want is the interview. The interview provides the opportunity for you to personally present your qualifications and experience in the best possible light. Most importantly, from the company perspective, it gives them an opportunity to assess your personality, to take a look at your personal, interpersonal skills and communication skills, and they're gonna be thinking about how well are you gonna fit in with the rest of their team. So finally, you get the call for the interview. But wait, before you rush in, take a few bit, minutes to gather your thoughts. Before you go in for the interview, you have to do your homework again. And I know you're thinking, what? But here's the thing, you may have applied for many jobs and suddenly now you get a call back from a company that you applied for, let's say four weeks ago. It's important that you're keeping track of all the positions that you're applying for and holding on to those job postings. Because before you run in for the interview, you better go back and research the company and the position that you applied for. That way, when you get asked a question about the company, you can tell them about your research and then answer the question. You never want to go in blind, not quite sure which job it is you're going to be interviewed for. It also proves to your future employer that you're serious and hardworking, and you're definitely gonna help them reach their goals by being such a great employee. A couple other things you can do before you go on the interview. Of course, be aware of the typical interview questions and practice your answers. Have an idea of the competitive salary for the position and know your own salary requirements. Go back to that job bank website that I shared with you a few weeks ago. That's gonna help you understand what the competitive salary is for this position in the specific market that you're applying for. And then get ready for the interview. After you've completed your homework on the company and the position, you know the salary range and your own salary requirements, now get ready for the questions. There are two different types of interview questions that you're going to encounter. The first questions, we call these standard questions, and they, they really get to, do you fit within our organization, and why should we hire you? The first question you're gonna get is tell me something about yourself. Think back to your elevator speech. This is a great opportunity for you to sell yourself in a very short period of time. This is not an opportunity for you to tell them about where you grew up and whether you're the middle child or not and where you feel like you want to go in the future. This is really quick. Something brief. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me something about yourself is all focused on your elevator speech. And I'll give you a hint. It's the first question I'm going to ask you as part of the mock interview so I can hear your elevator speech. The second thing is, you may get asked about your strengths and weaknesses. Believe it or not, this is a fit question, and it's one of the number one things that people ask me is, how do I answer these questions? 
Well, strengths and weaknesses actually should relate back to the position that you've applied for. So think back to the job posting. What are you strongest at when it came to that job posting? Where are some areas where you think you might need additional training or assistance before you're 100% up to speed? They're listening here to see if you've done your homework and if you have a good understanding of the job that you've applied for. So talk about your strengths as they relate to this job. Talk about your weaknesses as they relate to the position as well and make sure how you tell them how you think you could overcome those weaknesses. For instance, if I'm applying for a job of an operations supervisor and I know I have great teamwork and communication skills, but maybe my SAP skills are a bit weak. When I'm asked this question, I would tell them about how I've got demonstrated experience working with teams and I would tell them some stories around that. And then I would highlight for them that SAP might be an area of weakness. I wouldn't just stop there though. I would make sure that I dive in and tell them all of the training that I have taken in SAP, but that of course SAP is differently configured for each business that you go into. So I might highlight for them that this could be a potential weakness and that it might take me some time to get up to speed. Get it? Why are you applying for this position? Again, this goes right back to the job posting. This isn't about, well, we're close to home and I think that you might pay really well. This again ties back into where do you see your biggest strengths, biggest wins when it came to this job? What made you motivated to apply for this position and this company? Bring in your research on the business here. How are you qualified? Again, go back to the job posting. You're starting to hear a theme here. All of these fit questions relate to the homework that you've done before you came in. How are you qualified you should be bringing in and letting them know that you've reviewed the job posting again and you know that these are the qualifications that they want and these are the ones that you have specifically. Same thing with why are you interested in working for us. Think about the research that you've done on the company website. Are they growing? Do they have an interesting research and development branch? Perhaps they have offices around the world. This is a great time to bring in your homework and show them that you're going to be a superior candidate because you've done your research before you arrived. What can you contribute to the company? Again, similar to the interest question, where have you done your homework? How do you think that you could fit into our new business if we're growing and developing new products or supply chains? Short-term goals and long-term goals. Again, these are not necessarily focused on you at this point. What are the company's short-term goals? What are the company's long-term goals? These are probably right on the main page of their website. Talk to them about how your short-term goals similarly match the company's short-term goals. And same with the long-term goals. Where do they see themselves in 10 to 15 years? And talk about how you're a match for that. So these fit questions really relate to, have you done your homework? And they're listening for evidence of this as they're asking these questions. Those research questions are probably less than 20% of the questions that you're gonna get. And they're typically handled through the first interview. As you get deeper into the interview process, you're gonna hear more of what we call behavior or competency questions. And what we're trying to get to here is, if we hire you, how will you react in a variety of different situations that you're going to encounter? So for instance, a difficult situation that you had to deal with, what did you do and what were the results? You hear lots of questions about, tell me about a time when you had to, for instance, work under pressure, Work, with, work as part of a team, when you had to work with a boss that you didn't really like. Also questions related to explain your role on a team, under pressure, describe the last time you did something that went above and beyond, or tell us about a time that you had to work under a great deal of pressure. Tell us about an issue you had with someone and how you managed that situation. So you hear even in the tone and the way these questions are approached, that they're asking you to tell them a story. Tell us, describe, explain. There is a formula for answering these questions. And I wish I could take credit, but I cannot.
This formula has been around for a long time, but it's something as a recruiting manager that we all know about, and it's actually how we develop our point system when we're scoring you and you're answering questions. We're listening for this pattern because it checks all the boxes. It's called the STAR model because it stands for situation or task, action, and result. What you do is tell a true personal story that creates proof of events and it follows this pattern. It helps you prove that you have the qualities that you say you possess. The other great thing about star stories, they stop you from rambling or from not fully answering the question and not getting the full points. Whatever your skill or the quality that they're trying to get to, if you use a proof story, you establish your credibility to manage a particular situation. Before you go in for an interview, it's really important that you prepare several star stories that relate to applicable skills before you begin the interview. Again, where do you find out about the applicable skills that they're looking for? Go back to the job posting. What were the key things that they were looking for? Probably things about teamwork, technical skills, communication skills, leadership. They're giving you the signals that you need to prepare for. So make sure you have some star stories ready. Those are the competencies that they're going to ask you about. You don't need to go into a long and detailed response. Short and to the point is what they're looking for. Make sure you use I statements. They're looking for you to clearly describe your actions and the positive result. And you use these stories to discuss how you meet the various job requirements. Using the STAR model, you're creating proof that you've managed a similar situation or task in the past, that you took action, and that you had a positive outcome. It's not enough to say, I will or I would do something when answering a question in an interview because they want to hear proof. Saying, I will manage it this way or I would do that is actually sort of telling me a fairy tale. It's kind of like telling me about Never Never Land. And you actually get zero points for that because I'm not getting any proof that you've actually demonstrated these qualities in the past. So let's look at some examples together. These aren't complicated. These are real examples that I've heard in my time in recruiting when I'm working with people who are just starting out in their career. So I've broken this one out, this response out, into situation, task, action, and result, just so that you can clearly see how the pattern works out when I'm answering the question. So the question is, how do you demonstrate leadership? And here's the response. At Durham College, I worked on a number of large projects with groups. In one particular course, we were assigned a group project that was due in four weeks. The project required a 10-minute group presentation and a short research report. After the first week, my group had still not had a meeting to discuss the project. I took the initiative to gather everyone's contact information and set up a group meeting at a time that worked for everyone. I also did some preliminary research on our topic and, the, and at the meeting, I suggested subtopics to each group member so we could focus our research. I feel that in organizing the first meeting and assigning topics helped our group become focused and organized. In the end, our project was successful and we received a great mark and it was completed on time. Ta-da! That's the whole STAR response. You hear lots of I statements here. So I took the initiative. I did some preliminary research. But they've clearly outlined the situation or task in just a couple of sentences. What was it that they had to do? And then what was the action they took? And ta-da, the final result. Let's walk through a few more. Tell me about a time you had to deal with a stressful situation. I'm currently employed at The Gap, and last Christmas Eve I was working on the closing shift. I'd worked busy shifts before, but never this busy. On a regular day, we have two cashiers running, and on that day, we had doubled to four cashiers to handle the increased business. About two hours before closing, with the store packed full of customers and four long lines, two of our debit machines went down. This created a big problem for our customers. 
I quickly informed our manager of the situation and worked with him to redirect customers to different lines for credit and cash versus debit. I also made sure to speak to every customer in line to ensure they were in the right place so we could move them through as efficiently as possible. I was able to deal with the situation quickly and calmly, and my manager rewarded me with a small Christmas bonus for my positive attitude managing the situation. Ta-da! Nicely done. How long did that take for you to listen to? Probably about a minute and a half. You would get full points for this response. I'm clearly understanding what was the situation that was presented and what task did you have to take on. I'm hearing lots of action statements and to wrap it all up in a nice bow, there's a nice end result. Okay, how about another one? Here's one that would work well for any of these questions. Let's say you get a question about, tell me about a time you work under pressure as part of a team, a tight timeline or deadline, or took on a leadership role. Here's a response from a student last semester who clearly walked me through their star story. We were due to deliver a class presentation for a large project, and one of my key team members who had the final presentation file on their laptop got stuck on a train heading into school from Toronto. I took control of the situation and contacted the professor before class began to find out if we could change the order of the presentation. He agreed, so I knew he had bought a little bit of time. I had the team member email me the presentation, so we had the final copy in the event they did not make it to class in time for the presentation. And I worked with the rest of the team to divide up the speaking roles so we could still go on with or without our full team. Our team member did not make it to class for the start of the presentation, but we went on without him. I admit we may have been a bit rough around the edges, but it was warmly received. Our team member managed to get there for the last 10 minutes to answer questions. And in the end, the professor was really impressed by our teamwork, professionalism, and perseverance, and we ended up with a great mark. So here's what you need to do. Think about the STAR model for answering. How could you clearly define a situation or task in a few sentences? Then work through the action that you took. And finally, what was the end result? You'll get lots of questions to be able to answer these STAR using the STAR model. When you get questions like working under stress and pressure, they're trying to get to the competency of composure. Working in teams talks to group work and tasks. Questions around leadership speak to your, your ability to work in teams and your ability to take charge of a situation. What about your organizational skills? Well, you'll get questions around time management. Dealing with conflict speaks to your ability to deal with difficult people. And the ability to deal with risk talks about how do you manage tough challenges. Perseverance and creativity speak to how well you can solve problems. And last but not least, today you get lots of questions about your communication skills, which deal with how do you deal with other people, those interpersonal skills. I'm sure you have the ability to create a star story for all of these, or you wouldn't be where you are today. So think about the job posting, take a look at it. Think about the different competencies that they're looking for. Probably many of these are in here and then start developing your own star stories. They are the formula for your success. Once you develop five to 10 star stories or examples for yourself, you can use them to apply to a wide variety of questions and circumstances. You don't have to have 40 of these ready. You do need to have five to 10 of them. I would say 10 and you're a very prepared candidate, ready to dive into any job interview. But even just with five star stories, Listen for the question. Listen to the competency that they're asking. You may be able to use one of your star stories multiple times. You tell them the one story, for instance, talking about how you demonstrate leadership. And then let's say a few questions later, you get a question around teamwork. And then you have the same star story. That's okay. Now tell them that you wanna refer back to that example that you gave before, and let me tell you a little bit more about how that involved working as part of a team and just expand upon your previous answer. So star stories can be used multiple times throughout one interview. 
You want to prepare your star stories that clearly outline the situation task, your action, and the result. And again, think of the themes, conflict, leadership, time management, working under stress, teamwork, etc. You're going to be asked questions by me in the upcoming mock interviews and be expected to respond using the STAR formula. So make sure you have some of these ready. I'm going to be listing for that pattern. And remember, you know you're on track with your STAR story if it only takes you a couple of minutes to respond. If after a few minutes you're still responding and circling around, you're not following the STAR pattern. I've known a lot of hockey players in my time, personally, and here's the thing I want to tell you about hockey. This is one of my favorite players, Josh Brown, who plays for the Florida Panthers. I had the privilege of having Josh live with us when he played for the Oshawa Generals here, so I know Josh quite well. And we've talked a lot about hockey and a lot about what it takes to be a great NHL player. You can learn a lot about hockey in a few hours. I didn't know much about hockey before I met Josh, but after talking to him for just a few hours, I learned a lot about hockey. There's still some things I'm confused about, like icing, but overall there's quite a bit I know. But the thing about hockey is, if I can learn a lot about it in a few hours, I can't do hockey after hearing about it for just a few hours. So even though I have a pro who tells me all about what hockey is all about, it doesn't mean I could put on a pair of skates, pick up a stick, and go out there and actually play hockey after just a few hours. You might be wondering, what does hockey have to do with preparing for an interview? Well, when it comes to interviews, formality matters for skill development. Just like hockey, you have to have structure, you have to have feedback, you have to have assessment and then application, and then the skill becomes second nature to you. So although we could be somewhat great at hockey if we go out and play road hockey once in a while with our friends, in order to become an NHL player, we need structure, feedback, assessment, and then application of our skills over and over again so that it becomes second nature. And just another insight, on the right there is one of my second favorite players, Jack Stadnika. He also lived with us for a number of years while he played here for the Oshawa Generals. And Jack is currently playing for the Boston Bruins.